Everybody, this is Christian Buckley doing another MVP Buzz Chat, and I'm talking today with Melanie. Hello, hello, good to see you from Minneapolis. <laughs> so it was, it, and just saw you, of course, at the event. And for those that haven't been out to the M365 Twin Cities event that just happened, and it's uh, we're back on the twice a year schedule, right? Is that yes, we are. Yeah. So we'll be mm -hmm. back in the spring again. So Melanie, for folks that don't know you, who are you? We already you already said where you are, but what yeah. do you do? Okay, so um, I am an eight-time Microsoft MVP for M365 Apps and Services, and I work for Ernst & Young. I am a, an associate director, and what that means in my role is that I am what we call a campaigns lead. Uh, this is for enterprise technology, and it is um, for all of our colleagues and the technologies that they use in their day-to-day -day lives doing their work, not for our special, you know, client systems, you know, or anything like that that we've developed, you know, for solving their particular problems. This means that I engage with the M365 stack every day and also um, other systems as we do deployments, as we do deprecations, as we retire technical debt, and as we try to teach our users to get the business value from all the tools that we have licensed. So that might be something like UiPath Studio X or something in the power family. Um, I am part of of a group called Service Adoption. And what we have is we've got a formal intake process where we're taking in things from all the product managers. We're putting it through a qualification input process. Do we or do we not engage or do we hand you off to someone else? Then it goes through an actual um, change management PMO where we've got pro -sci certified practitioners who are qualifying all the impacts of that change. We've got engagement, which links out to all of our global business relationship managers. If you don't know, EY is huge. We've got about 400,000 people across 70 countries, which means we've got slices from everywhere from top floor partners and principals to shop floor people. Um, and then we've got all these sensitive geos. So we've got engagement that reaches out, out to all the BRMs. And then of course, I like to say, I am content. And we are last mile delivery. We are the tail wagging on the dog and we are the ones everyone yells at when they don't like the stuff that hits their inbox <laughs> or their team's cards yeah. or you yeah. know or any other channel by which we reach them well have, so so if you're involved with the internal usage of this technology mm -hmm. how much does I'm, I'm i'm sure the company showcases you to prospective customers that they because oh, yeah. i mean that's some of the, i know that that's always the case some of the most popular microsoft content for example is like how microsoft did it how they go and mm -hmm. actually use the technology and it, it's always uh, it, it's always interesting to hear that like well what actually worked and what other third party or custom built solutions did you have to use to fill gaps Oh, absolutely. I have been licensed for M365 Copilot, and it's going to hit my inbox any day now. And so I'm sitting there hitting F5, 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 <laughs> just waiting for it to arrive because yeah. I've been reading all about it. But now I'm going to actually get hands on with it. And we know, of course, that we are going to be the ones who are going to be drinking the champagne. And we're going to be ones helping to go out to our customers and roll it out and start realizing a lot of the process efficiencies and just from my background, and this is getting back to where I play and what I do, I am basically a digital strategist. I am change. I am communications. I am technology adoption and business value. So when you think of that golden triangle, which is people and process and technology sitting in a circle of culture, I am all about where that it actually meets the humans and the humans change their behavior and deliver the business value. It's so interesting because I don't know if you knew this about me. So I, I've actually I've shared it on other podcast episodes. But I uh, so before I went to work for Microsoft in 2006, I actually was uh, was accepted into a doctoral program where I was going to study the impacts of collaboration technology on teams, on people, and nice. look at how the technology is actually changing the way that we work. And I was, a lot of my background is more on the PMO side, so project portfolio management technology. Mm -hmm. That's how I got into knowledge management space. Um, but all the collaboration, the social tech, like all of that kind of fits in the space. It's been fascinating to see how that's changed. And I know you and I have talked about this too, about how now the AI tools co-pilot is going to actually, is going to change that even more. It'll be yes. interesting 
to to just discuss this, to to talk about it and watch mm-hmm. the change as it, as it happens. Yes. And and honestly, um, I think that companies right now, if they're looking out at everything that's going on in the marketplace and you and I were just, um, you know, kicking off the podcast and just making sure all the sound equipment was working. And as we were, the news came across the wires that open AI fired Sam Altman. This is this is changing in real time. It is almost primordial level, you know, just chaos and real time evolution out there. And if companies are wondering what they can do right now, you just mentioned PMO and TMO, right? Project management and transformation management. And one thing they can do right now is just get your internal house in order and have fun with the visioning process. Because this is, you know, this is all something where um, it's time to do the experimentation. It's time to get your house in order. It's not the time right now to go pick a pony. Yeah, there is, there is so many, I I mean, where I, there's, uh, you know, here we are at the end of, uh, I just came back from Orlando from a live 360. We had Ignite that just happened. We were trying to monitor the keynotes mm-hmm. while we're sitting in a booth uh, <laughs> watching that. Uh, and all the announcements that are coming out, reading through. And for folks that aren't aware too, with all of the yeah. announcements, uh, there's something called the Book of News. So mm-hmm. if you find the Microsoft Ignite 2023 Book of News, and you can see um, all of the announcements and, and uh, you know, there were, um, just looking at co-pilot mentions, I said did like a search through it, and it was something like 280 mentions of co-pilot. Oh, and 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 it's not a conference if Microsoft doesn't rename something. Oh, so now, course. like you're now, like you're being chat. It's co-pilot, right? You know. So you know, all I would say is, um, you know, this is. Who else were you going to get to talk to you, by the way, Christian, who isn't exhausted from McKnight this week? <laughs> oh, yeah, there's so much. Any Anything that just surprised you? Anything, any any big announcements that, that just made you kind of stop in, in your uh, in, in your I'm motion? Very, I'm very intrigued by SharePoint Premium mm. um, because this is something where I think there's been a lot of questioning and a lot of chatter about how SharePoint was kind of starting to fade into the background, that it's a core technology. And we had to have the discussion that, no, SharePoint is this bedrock. It's not going away as a product name. Right. And suddenly, instead, we're going in the opposite direction. Here's SharePoint Premium, and I need to unpack that goodie bag. Yeah, there, there will be many uh, articles written about that. So there's that. The other one I was very excited about was Project and Planner oh, and To Do becoming mm-hmm. one product. Yeah. I think that was the announcement, one product, or they're merging together, they're integrated across, mm-hmm. which is which has been the direction of this oh, for, for some for time years. anyway. So no, no surprises years. there, but I'm um, hoping hoping that it that it speeds up. Right. Right. I mean, this is something where I remember, I, I just think I have an old blog that I wrote out on LinkedIn because, you know, I write infrequently when I do a publish on LinkedIn and it was about planner. And and the funny thing was I every now and then I would go and I would check and I would still say, do they have a recycle bin yet? Do yeah. they have a recycle bin yet? Yeah. Do they have a recycle bin yet? Because <laughs> you could fat finger something right out of existence. It's I'm so excited to see this um, this maturing. And finally yeah. unifying. I mean, uh, oh, can I also tell you that um, I am absolutely looking at everything that's going on with AI coming in and how it can take in and how it can make sense of unstructured data sets. I mean, mm-hmm. bad quality data, no. Unstructured data, yes. Look at Viva Engage and think of it as unstructured data. And Viva Engage longitudinally is Yammer. Well, for one thing, redheaded stepchild, no respect, no respect, whatever. But it's not on the graph. Yeah. What happens when you have a good AI engine and you can point it at all that unstructured, wonderful, rich data in Viva Engage? I, I am, you know, honestly, the, the the what I'm most excited about in, in the future. Of course, I look. I work for a smaller organization, so we're not even mm-hmm. eligible yet for. Uh, for the co-pilot, which is, uh, you know, 300 seat. Me- Are you caught in that 300 seat vacuum? We're, oh. Yeah, we're so we're in the SMB space. So we're under 100 yeah. employees, but um, which is unfortunate. I know that Microsoft will we'll see something in a couple of years. And and of course, as RDs and MVPs, we'll get access to it. So it's not mm-hmm. about that. But being able to go in and utilize, because uh, we do use Engage. We're, you know, a, mm-hmm. a hammer yeah. shop as well on that side of it. But to be able to go and use uh engage with Amplify, for me to be able to look in across those conversations, as well as my personal, like my OneNote, 
um, mm -hmm. all of my records, because everything that I've written in the last decade is captured in OneNote. And I want to be able to tap into that. Uh, and so I know. <laughs> well, yeah. and again, so I've had many friends tell me, it's like, well, Christian, you know, you can go do that without Copilot. You could go and build an AI model around that data today. So there are plenty of things you can go and do, but I want that in context to right. all of my content, to my work activities, to my email. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking and forward to this next step. Honestly, I, I think it should just work. It should just work. And we are one step closer. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's going to no, be exciting. I, I, well, I'm, I'm going to spend the weekend reading the book of news. I know that sounds great, doesn't it? <laughs> it yeah. It's, well, we were sitting there going through it on, uh, on the expo mm -hmm. hall floor and there's a yeah. lot to go through, but yeah. what, so what are you speaking on and writing on right now? What are kind of your, your okay. hot topics? Well, the thing is that I just uh, delivered last weekend when you were uh, there for the N365 Twin Cities um, was I was delivering about Viva Connections and then how you needed to be ready for that feed in Viva Connections by leveling up your game in Viva Engage, Stream and SharePoint News. And I think that Viva Connections simply, it's not yet getting, I think, the attention that it's going to merit soon. It's a little bit quiet, and I think it's going to turn into the blob that ate New York. And I'll kind of tell you why. Um, intranet operations over the years is basically something where it's hideously expensive. Every time you re-architect your intranet, you know that this is cha-ching. It's a huge team. It's a huge investment. And over the years, as speaking as a person who's done this work, we have struggled and we have really tried, but we have failed to deliver on a place that realizes the big two of what you're trying to get there. One is a portal to absolutely everything that a person needs with the personalization level that we would like to deliver according to level and geo and rights. But then second, that integration to what is the stuff I care about, the files I've handled that I'm looking for, my task list, right? Other things like that that matter to me in my line or that mm -hmm. sort of thing, or even in my language. And the thing that Connections is bringing to the table quietly, and right now at least for the bargain price of an E3 license, is it's saying, hey, turnkey, turn it on. Turn it on and then personalize it. And you can do so in draft. You can do so with the number of experiences you want. They are quietly, the more I dove into this to create that presentation, the more I recognized how deeply they are preparing for organizations in all their messy complexity of subsidiaries and global footprint and specialty um, you know, um, architecture. It's all going to be there. And Microsoft is going to continue to build and build and build resources into this until if you're a company and you're looking at this saying, look, I know I've got all kinds of technical debt over here, and I've got a lot of people who are used to spending, if not years, possibly decades fighting turf wars over this. But what are my usage analytics? What's the value I'm getting for that investment? And why wouldn't I stand these up side by side and just quietly grow it and see how it works? And then eventually see if, you know what, maybe it's time to move on over. Because I really think this is going to be disruptive long term. Well, I think uh, there's uh, you know, the fact that Microsoft moved away a couple of years back, but they really moved away from the idea of SharePoint as a Swiss Army knife. In mm -hmm. fact, Jeff Teeper said many times, he's like, I, I don't like that. Like we try to correct that, that the core of SharePoint strength is you know, collaboration, document collaboration. Yes, but it is intranets. It is mm -hmm. at, at the core intranet. And the, I, I kind of missed the messaging, the inner loop, outer loop. I thought that was great messaging. Frankly, I I, I'm, that. I'm, st I, I still use it. I'm still a fan. And yeah. look, go ahead, haters gonna hate. It works. You know, I think the whole it works thing. Too. I think, the well, whole you know, thing about a model is every, you know, a lot of models are useful and they are all partially wrong. Right. Well, my, <laughs> Microsoft, I think just as they do, they've got like the new season, they've got the new messaging around there to uh, update. But mm -hmm. like, I, I never moved on from the inner loop, outer loop because people got it. Then the light right. went off when they understood the tools that you use in exchange and where teams versus the intranet versus, you know, uh, uh, Yammer now engage, you know, each of those pieces fit within if you think about values. if you think about how we organize even just our mental models for our friends and our family we have our inner ring of the people that who are closest to us and we recognize that it goes out in concentric circles it just right. does it works yep. <laughs>
Yeah. Well, that's I think that's because people recognize truth and and right. The, I mean, this yeah. this just this just maps to my existence, and if it doesn't map to yours, I always like to say your mileage may vary. <laughs> yeah. Well, Melanie, I, so for folks that want to reach out, connect with you, get in touch with you, where are you most mm-hmm. active in social? Where where can I am you? only I am only on LinkedIn, and that's for reasons. Okay, yeah. so so yeah. the thing is, um, I was back in my years at Cargill, which is where I originally became mm-hmm. an MVP because rolling out back then Yammer in 2012. Yes, I'm old. Um, I ended up uh, in a social media governance role, and that meant that um, I was tied into and saw a whole lot of the sausage behind the scenes for everything from Facebook to Instagram to the rise of TikTok and all that sort of thing. And to be honest, um, I started to have opinions about, okay, what they're doing with my data and the fact that they are building up profiles, even for my children who haven't joined. And I understand that this is the currency of the economy. I understand the barn door has been open for 15 years and and every animal is already out in the fields. I know it is. But at the same time, once I moved out of that role, and I was not uh, required to have my account connected to Cargill's Facebook and all that sort of thing. I eventually decided, you know what? This was especially around 2016 or so, I decided I was gonna quit. And I used a a vendor called My Social Book and I printed out all my history of my posts because I didn't wanna lose all of that stuff and then grandly started deleting my accounts. And the only one I'm still on is LinkedIn. So you will find me yep. there and you will find, um, you know, I I have a little bit of a habit of blogging out there infrequently, but the few things that I publish, I stand by. So you will find my writing back there as far as like 2015. That's great. Well, yeah. I will, uh, we'll make sure we'll have the link and the, the profile too. I'll tell you, so my, my wife is right there with you. So she yeah. removed herself from just about everything and you know, for some of the same reasons. So, oh, you know, I used to be hot and heavy on Twitter, yeah. but yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's still part of the, the core job uh, for, for me still have to be involved with this stuff. In fact, I, I'm getting uh, pressure that they want me to uh, go do some stuff on TikTok. So. Ugh. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, um, separate identity for that. All right. Uh, separate I, device. I know separate I'm, device. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have an approach yeah. to that as well, but yeah. well, Melanie, well, really, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's just such a time suck. I, I know, yeah. I know. Uh, but well, really appreciate your time and uh, thanks for uh, participating in the MVP Buzz Chat. Absolutely. Always great to talk with you. And I'm sure we'll be spending time talking about AI soon. <laughs> <All right. laughs>